Welcome to With You Every Step, the solo travel podcast that explores, explains, and hopefully inspires you to travel the world by yourself. I'm your host, Michelle Lee. This episode is for all those adrenaline junkies out there. Have you ever had that moment when you were standing on the edge of a cliff and you had those thoughts that you wanted to jump? I can tell you that I haven't, which is why I've invited Miles Dasher to join us today. Miles has jumped more than any other human on this planet. Miles is a base jumper. He also has the record for the most amount of base jumps in a 24 hour period. Miles jumped out to me when I saw the vision of his base jump over the UNESCO site of Petra in Jordan. Thanks for keeping your feet on the ground long enough to join us today, Miles. <laughs> My pleasure, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Now, can we start at the very start? When was the moment that you thought, I want to jump off a cliff? Well, if we take it all the way back to the beginning, I'd like to start with that I was born at a very young age. And growing up, you know, I've I basically started jumping into pools, doing flips and that kind of thing as a young kid, and then uh, climbing trees, jumping into nets, and I've always wanted to be a stuntman, and I took judo and learned how to jump off the roof of houses. I jumped off my own house roof. So so your parents were constantly on you, I'm assuming? For... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My mom was always freaking out like I was going to kill myself. But um, <laughs> Because isn't that – that's a parent's – it's a parent's job, isn't it, to stop their kids from hurting themselves, and then they just can't stop you. You're jumping off roofs. I know. I, I would only hurt myself for like a day. I was a really quick healer. My well, my dad was in the Air Force, so um, I've been to a lot of air shows and and seen all kinds of action in the sky. And one day in Ohio, hanging out with our cousins, um, playing soccer, this guy was skydiving down and he landed in the soccer field right next to us. And we're just like, "Whoa, that was amazing! I want to do that. That's so cool." I was eight years old at the time, and it, not until after my 25th birthday did I make my first skydive. Yeah, that one was amazing. It was, I can remember it, you know, just like it happened yesterday. It was September 5th, 1995 and jump out of the plane and everything went sideways a little bit because you're kind of sliding down this hill. And, and then uh, Dan and D.O.B. were my um, AFF instructors who were holding on to me. And it was just hook, line and sinker for me. It was, ah, oh, you got me. This sport's so awesome. Oh, my gosh. I got to figure out how I could get a job here at the drop zone so I can stay here every day and just jump. And, um, oh yeah, it was just too much fun right from, right from the start. And, uh, so you started jumping out of planes first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, airplanes. Well, I started bungee jumping first. I had a friend in college, um, Jimbo, Jim Fritch, who I had a primal instinct bungee jumping company. And I moved in, um, with him after I graduated college, I, I went to go ski for a while. I'm supposed to be a PE teacher, but I got sidetracked when I went skiing, for, um, I was going to ski for a year and that turned into 11 and a half years. And, uh, next thing you know, um, I'm bungee jumping, uh, just started skydiving. And then a couple of years after that started base jumping, thanks to my roommate, Frank. So Frank was already base jumping. Yeah. We had this crazy roommate who lived underneath the, um, it was like in a sauna out back and you never really saw him much. Cause he was always gone. He's always jumping off stuff and like kind of he had weird hours. He would he would wake up in the middle of the night and, and would go base jumping all night. And in the daytime, he would sleep. So it's kind of like a vampire. But uh, I was just watching videos with Frank. Um, Frank in Bali, we call him the gambler. And we were watching his videos. And he's, okay, don't tell anyone about this because you're not allowed to jump off of this building, you know. And and, and we're like, whoa, these videos are sweet, dude. And, and And then I saw some skydiving footage from Frank as well. And I'm like, dude, where do we go skydiving? I'm ready. Sign me up, man. Come on. I want to go skydiving. And he's like, okay, you got a credit card? Let's go. And we went to uh, Davis, California, and learned how to skydive. And in three days, I was off student status and jumping on my own. You know, I'd done 11 jumps um, with coaches and instructors. And then next thing you know, I'm just jumping with Frank, and he's teaching me how to free fly. We're sit flying on jump number 12. And Wow. So only three days of training? Yep. Yeah, it was all day. You know, the first day was like eight hours of ground school, one jump. And then the next day was, oh gosh, it was like eight jumps on the second day. And then we finished off. Um, we were done by almost uh, just afternoon with a um, 
the 11 jump jump course accelerated free fall it was so accelerated it was awesome <laughs> I personally couldn't think of anything worse. I have a massive fear of heights. And I didn't realize this until recently. I was in Peru and we were uh, hiking in the mountains and I had all these panic attacks. And I knew I had a little bit of a fear. I didn't realize how intense it was when it overtook me. So I couldn't imagine just standing on the edge and going, I'm going to (laughs) jump. It's different though. I mean, skydiving, you, you're jumping out of an airplane at 13,000 feet and, and you're just looking at Google Earth. Once you take off and you're a thousand feet in the air, everything's small, you know, people are less than ant size and, and you're just, it looks like you're, it's surreal. You're looking at pictures, you know, and, and then you jump out and, and the ground's not moving. You just feel a lot of air and, you know, you go so high that you're just, you're just flying in the wind and skydiving. Oh my gosh, it was hook, line and sinker. It just felt so good. And, and it's all about balance and swimming on the air. And I was a really good swimmer and uh, got good balance, um, was blessed with good genes. And uh, yeah, just started doing flips and spins and twists and like, what can we do next? And next thing you know, my friends are all, hey, let's go base jumping. And I'm like, nah, I don't know. That's that's a gnarly sport. And, and uh, being a tree climber um, since birth, I love to climb trees and rocks and um, do a fair bit of mountain climbing. But um, yeah, I never really... I, I did kind of once feel like an urge, like, wow, look at all this air. Like I was, it was when we were hiking up in Yosemite and on top of Half Dome and you're on top of Half Dome, you're looking down going, whoa, this is so high up. You can fly off of this, man. It's awesome. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that was when I first thought, you know, okay, time to figure out how to, how to base jump and, and use parachutes off, off the earth now, you know? Mm. And uh yeah, I think you, you kind of blew me up a little bit at the beginning. I don't have more jumps than anyone. I have more base jumps because um, skydiving and base jumping are, are two different sports. You know, skydiving is like, wee, I'm jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. I'm a backup. I got a plan B and everything. But base jumping is you have a single parachute system and you're jumping off of a bridge, an antenna, um, a building or a cliff. And, and everything's usually um, really close and, and you're only like 300 feet in the, and, you know, 300 feet up as opposed to 13,000 feet up and you're going top to bottom in, in 20 seconds, you know? So base jumping is like skydiving on steroids and, uh, yeah. and that's what we're doing. And, and just recently my friend, uh, Sean Chuma, who's out here eating his Wheaties and charging, he, he's, we're, he just beat me in jump numbers. So I'm number two. Who does number two work for in the middle of space jumps? I just got I just got to come clean on that one because uh, you know that's a that's a pretty prized possession to hold that record. And right now, Sean Chuma's sitting on that one. Which uh, get it, boy? You know that's the thing about base jumping is it's an intense sport, but you've got to you've got to approach it carefully and cautiously. Otherwise, um, you're not going to make it to your your next base jump. So mm. so every jump you do, you've got to hit it methodically. And you've got to charge. you got to get gnashed teeth and get after it. I got this, you know. Yeah. And if you're not feeling it, walk away. You know, you got to be smart about it. Otherwise, you know, you won't last this long, especially in the sport of base jumping. Pretty dangerous. So this is your job now, right? I know. Can you believe that people pay me for this? <laughs> Crazy. Don't tell me. I still love it more than anything. <laughs> so do you, do you remember when did it change from being a hobby to a profession? Uh, when I guess started getting paid because <laughs> I still just approach it the same manner as, you know, as um, when I first started, it was like, whoa, we can do this. Oh, wow. We can do that. Oh, we can do this. And now, um, you know, I'm a professional base jumper with the Red Bull. I'm on the Red Bull Air Force and uh, and Red Bull like gets behind me and helps me um, pursue the dreams that I'd like to go do. Just last year, got to go to Jordan and jump off of the Petra wall, which is probably the most intense base jump I've ever done um in my life you know like the, oh, the footage know is amazing it. oh absolutely that's what yeah. that's what made you jump out to me like my pun there mm-hmm. yeah yeah so- hey <laughs> I see what you did there you took those words and used yeah, them together yeah. like that yeah yeah, yeah. So- <laughs> now that's what I saw and I was like I need to speak to this guy this is phenomenal I couldn't believe it. firstly Petra is stunning and then for you to jump into that wow. small space and then down in front of it oh and it, my listeners if you if you haven't seen it you need to youtube it and watch it it is amazing 
It's pretty unreal, actually. You know, you got I've I've always seen that on on the Indiana Jones movies. You know, Temple of Doom and and like okay, let's go get the where were they going for the um, well gosh the uh, the chalice oh gosh what's it called <laughs> where you drink the water and you live forever oh, cup yeah. of eternity yeah um, well that's where they were going to find that and uh, when I first saw it in the movies I was like whoa is that real that can't be real that's it's so beautiful. I mean, it's amazing just to go to visit Petra, you know, and to be able to jump off of it. That was that was icing on the cake. That was like no way. But just to go there and visit it in Jordan, it's called the um, oh gosh, come on, Miles. It's called the um, not the bank wall. Oh, the Treasury Building. Yes, thank you. The Treasury Wall, and the Treasury Wall in Petra, Jordan, is one of those iconic. It's it was built carved into the wall in 400 bc you know i mean it was before christ before the bible started everything all the religion everything that was carved into the wall and and just to see it it was like wait a minute that's like some serious architecture that are going on and and it's in this cliff face it's just so beautiful and when i saw that i'm looking at the cliff behind it i'm like oh my goodness i want to jump off that and and so did you visit it first before you had planned the jump no, I was actually ground crew for my teammates, um, Alaska John and Andy Farrington and Mike Swanson, and they were skydiving into Petra and uh, doing the first parachute landings into Petra Jordan, um, into the treasury wall right in front of it. So I was the ground crew guy. And while they're out surveying the site, you know, they're, they're talking to um, the, the crown prince of Jordan and, and you know, getting permission to, to do these things, you know, um, skydives and parachute jumps in the iconic locations. And, and then he asked if, if Mike, if he could jump, um, a parachute off the wall, off the cliff behind it. And Mike's like, not me, but I know a guy, you know, I got a teammate <laughs> and that's what we do. You know, the Red Bull Air Force, we're, we're a team of, of high profile demonstration, like a bunch of world champions in all in all aspects of the sport. We got wingsuit world champions, free fly world champions, canopy swooping world champions, base jumping world champions. You know, it's 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 a um, a big mix of the A team guys that come together to make our Red Bull Air Force team. And when the prince asked Mike if he could do it, he he said, "I know a guy, and we're going to bring him out." And he said, "Well, if he thinks it's okay, you know, if it's not too dangerous, you know, you know, let him make the call." And Mike assured him that you know. Our friend Miles, he has a family. He doesn't want to die. He would only do it if he's going to stick it 100%. And since then, I've been asked to do a lot of other crazy things, and I had to turn a few of them down. But uh, yeah, we're still, I'm still, you know, there's there's also a bucket list of of things that I'd like to go jump off of out there. There's there's so many monuments and features and just worldly, strikingly beautiful places that I'd like to go see. And and it's just um really lucky to to be on the rebel air force and to be able to get to travel to these places and go see the world from a base jumper's perspective and and look at it from the eyes of a jumper it's it's amazing yeah so is there any places in particular that you do have on your bucket list that you can tell us about oh gosh yeah there's there's all kinds of places well um there's these videos that you're that a lot of people are launching out of of greece and uh zach and tito's beach in in greece it's it's a shipwreck beach it's beautiful i really want to go there i would love to jump some things in america but um they're outlawed right now like el capitan and half dome those would be um pretty monumental places you know you're always looking at the uh st louis arch and the eiffel tower in paris i think the eiffel tower is probably the big one um are you allowed to jump off that uh no no well i mean no yeah we're, we're working on getting permission and that kind of thing. And, and it's always a process, yeah. but um, hopefully, hopefully we can get a permission slip here and, uh, and go send it. Yeah, and um, that's, that would be that's amazing. Statue of Liberty would be a really good one. That's a, it's a really low object though. That one you, you pretty much jump and open your parachute right away and then land. So okay. that's how that would go. Yeah. Okay. So in Australia, it's actually also outlawed, isn't it? It's illegal to jump in Australia. So that's why I'm guessing you haven't been here and jumped off our Sydney Harbour Bridge. I wish that would be awesome. That one's so beautiful. It's really iconic. And uh, yeah, we almost got permission to jump one of the buildings in Sydney in, oh, no, in Auckland. What's that tower? Is it called the Auckland Tower? I don't know. That's in New Zealand. 
It's not here. Oh, okay. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Different country. Thank you. Everything upside down over there kind of confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> We're all down south. <laughs> We're all down here. Yeah. We're neighbors. <laughs> I have been to the Gold Coast and uh, and done some surfing and and uh, we were going to do some skydiving, but uh, yeah, out, base jumping's outlawed there, so I didn't get a chance to do anything there. You know, mm. now I'm family man. I don't really do illegal base jumps anymore. You know, I may have learned that way, but uh, nope, we we tightened it up since then. Play the game, got to live by the rules. So you know, that's right. Let's play smart, play fair. Yeah, and it is dangerous, so you do need to. Oh yeah, be smart about what you're doing. Yeah, it's already a dangerous enough sport to worry about, you know, what you're doing and, and making sure you dot all your I's and cross the T's correctly instead of like, oh, run from the cops or like hide here. You know, I'd rather just focus on the jump and enjoy the beauty of flying. Mm. Do you think it should be outlawed or do you think that it would be safer if they didn't outlaw it and people were able to be able to jump in safe locations? Yeah, just like you said, like um, I think a permit basis for for safe locations. Take Yosemite for instance. You know, it's outlawed there as um, you know it was legal for a while, and then there were some bad apples that showed up and and just kind of rained on the parade. Then it was pronounced illegal, and there was a law made against it. And I, I believe that it can be done safely and in in the right way. But I believe a permit basis would be the way to um, move ahead into the future. Mm. And what's your favorite place that you have jumped? I'm guessing Petra. Yeah. Oh, man. Of course it's Petra. It's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah Petra is amazing. Um, yeah, I love Petra. I love uh, Switzerland. Um, the Jungfrau Mountain is one of my favorite places in the world, too. So you jump just... off a mountain? Yeah. Yeah, with a wingsuit. Yeah, there's a cliff on the top of this mountain, and you can you can jump and get enough speed to start flying your wingsuit. And first of all, you want to start flying wingsuits out of airplanes so you know how the sport works and how to fly your suit well. Then you start learning how to jump them off of cliffs, or first you start off with hot air balloons and then move towards cliffs. And there's there's some uh, there's some cliffs in Italy that are super overhung that we go to in um, Arco, Italy, Mount Brento just over a city called Dro, And uh, that's where I teach base jumping um, to my students where we go. I have a Miles Deeds base camp where I um, teach base jumping as well to people who've done enough skydives and have a competent level of proficiency for flying parachutes. And uh, we go to Italy and jump off of Mount Brento there. And that's, that's where I made my first wingsuit base jumps. And then once you get proficient at launching your wingsuit into the air, then you can start tightening it up and going to uh, lower and lower exit points where, you know, you want to make sure, because like Brento, you have a margin for error. You can mess up and you can actually go backwards towards the wall. It's so overhung that you can just like, whoops, turn around, fly away from the wall, and then uh, and then you're going to be okay. Can you explain what a wingsuit actually is? Oh, yeah, wingsuit. It's um, if you've ever seen the Roadrunner um, running away from Wile E. Coyote, where he puts on this like big giant suit. Or think of this, fabric connecting your wrists to your ankles and then your ankles to each other. And uh, basically, it's an inflatable suit that's pressurized just like a parachute gets pressurized with air when you move forward. And the, the suit is cut to make your body um, a human foil, a human airfoil, where you basically lay down on the air, your head's tilted forward, your legs are powered up with a big um, – there's a big uh, – big piece of fabric between your legs that's pressurized and when you lean forward on that and and deflect air as you glide across the wind you basically turn yourself into um like an airfoil where you dive your head and deflect wind off your your bottom of your body to get started and then as you build speed the wind comes over the top of your leading edge and and you turn into a human wing and start flying Wow. So it's the closest to a bird you'll ever be. That's it. That's it. And we can even dive them so fast now that we can start to plane out and even go up. But it takes speed to go up. And the only way we get speed is for diving and building speed. So, but yeah, it's, it's like, uh, it's like Rocky Bullwinkle, you know, where he just likes flying squirrels all around. And, uh, we've got these squirrel suits on that just 
grab power and, and we get a three to one glide ratio, which is the same as our parachutes. So every foot we drop, we go three feet forward. So we can sustain three to one glide ratio. And uh, it's amazing. God love wingsuits. It's one of the, I think it's the most fun you can have with your clothes on is flying a wingsuit. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> wow yeah i've seen the footage it looks pretty amazing i i couldn't even imagine having the confidence to do that and i'm guessing that not everybody would be able to jump into a wingsuit and then just take off and know what they're doing because it could be extremely dangerous no it's a highly advanced um, way to base jump it's even a highly advanced way to skydive so when you're doing these jumps you're often jumping from up very high on the side of a mountain. How do you get up there to start with? Oh yeah, it takes um, some mountaineering skills to get to a lot of these places that we go jump from. You know, you don't just like walk off of the trolley and then you're standing at the edge of a cliff ready to go base jumping because uh, most cliffs, they're inaccessible. You've got uh, no, no ropes. And um, a lot of times we just do free climbing and we just walk up the backside. And then uh, a lot of cases we use ropes, but um, most of the jumps that I do are have been figured out. You know, I'm not like leading the the push to be the first guy off of every object, you know, off of every cliff. And uh, but I have opened up a few cliffs. That's what we call <clears throat> base jumping when you go to a a new place. And you figure it out and you jump off of it for the first time. That's called opening the object. And um, I've opened a couple of them. And usually when you're opening an, an object, you're going to need ropes and some mountaineering skills and get to a place where no one's been before. And But, yeah, it's 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 a, uh, quite treacherous, some of the journeys that we take. And uh, I know a couple of people who have passed away even just getting to the places to jump off of. Oh, wow. Know? Yeah. It's dangerous, dangerous on those cliffs, yeah. mountaineering. It's really, have you had any slips or have you had any moments where you thought, whoa, this was close? Almost once, yeah. I was, uh, my friend Mike Swanson, he's super afraid of heights and um, he was starting to um, lock up, freeze up a little bit and we were traversing this broken shale field over this giant, uh, giant thousand foot fall and it started sliding a little bit and he started losing it. And I, I ran out there to help him and I was kind of behind him and helping him with his footing and he started panicking and I thought he was going to, cause I was barely holding on as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I thought he was going to kind of panic and freak out and knock both of us off the edge and, uh, <laughs> we made it, but, but it was gnarly, you know, <laughs> and, um, you, you can't really be afraid of the heights. Um, hiking around to most of the places that we go to and, and Swanson, he, he kind of is, he, when he gets to the edge, he's the man. You put a wingsuit on him and he's golden, you know, oh, but, but walking he just doesn't like the climbing something, part. Yeah. No, no, it freaks him out. And, and I went to help him and, oh man, we almost both went over the edge. It was, <laughs> that was the only time I've almost fallen. I'm pretty sure footed, you know, I was a, a tree climber since birth and, and climb mountains and stuff now too. But, uh, you know, you see those guys hanging on buildings with one arm. I could do that, but I just choose not to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's the right choice. <laughs> yeah, my wife always tells me make good choices. That's so, yeah, right. That's what we do. You know? yeah. So, yeah. So you do have yeah. you do have kids and a beautiful wife, Nikki. Now, thank you. You you have mentioned a couple of times that it has kind of changed the way that you jump now that you do have a family, but it hasn't oh, yeah. it hasn't stopped you. No, uh, uh, no. Well, a long time ago when, uh, Shane McConkie and I were, were base jumping together when we first started, we were thinking like, man, this sport's gnarly. Right. And it's funny that, uh, we were both thinking, man, we need to make this our job so that we can continue to do it because our significant others aren't going to like this sport because it is super dangerous. You know, base jumping is not for, you know, it's it's a dangerous sport. You got to approach it super carefully. Um, a, lot, a lot of people die in this sport, and that's just one of the facts. And you know, some people, you know, when you quit base jumping, you win. All right, if you could walk away from it. But the 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 most dangerous thing about it is it's so fun, and and you don't want to stop base jumping because it's just it's like the thrill is there. It's like it gives you such an adrenaline rush, such a high that once you you do the jump and you land, you're just like woo. You, it's like 
it's better than drugs, you know, it makes you feel so good and so strong and so, um, elated, I guess is a good term for that, that, um, you just want to keep doing that again and again and again. It's so fun. And, uh, for me, I like to learn new things and, and learn, you know, how to do different, different things. And, uh, and the sport, it has many different facets of it. There's wingsuit base jumping there. There's tracking suit base jumping. Um, I started some rope swing base jumps. There's, there's all kinds of different ways you could, you could, um, jump off of an object and fly your body. People have been launched with the cannons, you know, there's so many different ways to do it. And, uh, I think that's what intrigues me mostly is the, um, exploring avenue and and what's next what's new what can we do next to like to do this cool skill that like it's it's a tactical skill to jump off of the earth and then open a parachute and land and my wife um nikki knows that i approach it in a careful thoughtful manner so you know she trusts my um ability to make decisions you know life-saving decisions at moments notices and she's seen me walk away from some jumps too i don't just run out there and just like whoa hold my baby here, watch this. You know, I've, I've walked away from plenty of jumps. You know, you get up there and you're like, whoa, <laughs> nope, this is not conducive to do a safe base jump. I'm out of here. And even if, you know, you can do it and get away with it, I've walked away from places where, you know, nah, I, I, I want to live to jump another day. Yeah, and the I risk do is have, too high. I, it's, it's way too high. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, you know, so now like, we're basically calculating risks and, and now that we have kids, we're not taking the risks we were taking when we were 18. And we're not just like, woo, I got this. And my survival skills will kick in and everything's going to be awesome. But I'm um, now I'm like, wait a minute. Is this hundred percent? All right. All right. Yeah. It's about 60, 60, 40. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know personally if I would be okay with that, but, you know, <laughs> so h- how old are your kids now? Oh gosh, uh, Dorothy's fourteen, Audrey is twelve, and Eli's nine. So, do they like to do these same adrenaline jumps? You know, they're not skydivers or base jumpers because they're too young. However, um, Dorothy and Audrey they they do cheer contests. They're they're uh, they're they're cheerleaders, but they also do cheer competitions. Where cheer is like it's um, kind of one step up from cheerleading, yeah. where they are. Um, stunting. Oh, okay. So when they throw them up in the air and, and catch them and then they spin them around and they're the flyers. So, and that sport actually has more back injuries than any other sports and like even more so than base jumping. And now I'm like, really? Okay. Sorry. Sorry for making you guys worry. (laughs) Please, (laughs) please be careful. Catch my daughters, you know? Yeah. (laughs) That's right. Gary. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're go getters and, um, super skilled. Dorothy's doing, um, backflips with a full twist and trying to double it, trying to do double twists now. And she's surpassed me in my gymnastics ability and she's 14 and going for it. She's crushing it. Yeah. But, um, Eli is the only one that wants to base jump still, mm-hmm. but Audrey and Dorothy, they, they knew my friend Shane before he died. And then when he died, they were like, I don't want a pink princess parachute anymore, daddy. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah. I want you to be careful. So I'm careful. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I take more calculated, more calculations when I calculate my risks now. So yeah, but saying that I did see some footage of you jumping off a moving truck. So not yeah, yeah. just, not just on the side of a cliff, you j- jumped off a moving truck over a bridge. Yeah. Well, the math worked, you know, <laughs> <laughs> looked yeah. insane but it looked beautiful but it looked insane yeah yeah it was insane it was so fun and uh i would do that all day if they would let me um yeah no there's there's a few other things you know i'm i'm trying to put together this rope swing base jump contest right now and uh and uh we're doing some wingsuit target smashing contests where you fly through a target with your face you know 140 miles an hour with a wingsuit and just and so we're hitting these uh, paper and styrofoam targets, and we're looking to use other um, things to make these targets with. But uh, yeah, I'm just just kind of showing the love of of flying in general with wingsuits, and um, yeah, mm. just trying to do, do what I can. Well, you get the best vision. You have a GoPro on your helmet. Is that what you use? Yep. Yeah. Been rocking GoPros forever, and. 
got a new 360 degree Rilo. And uh, it's amazing what you can do with the 360 degree cameras now is we've been using them as um, learning tools because um, the thing that I learned in college is super big about reciprocal feedback being the number one source of learning motor skill development. And and that's what we're doing is it took me a long time to build these motor skills to you need know, to fly wingsuits to to base jump off of all these objects. And, and we've used cameras the whole time. And that's when in the beginning, Shane and I were rocking the old Sony PC 101s, you know, the micro tapes. And uh, and then people were like, dude, that footage is rad. Can we put it in our ski movie? We're like, yeah, that'd be awesome. Totally, dude. Yeah, put my name in the credits. Thank you. So we originally started shooting everything just to learn from the footage about what we're doing because you could break it down in slow motion and go, oh, look what you did there. That made this happen. And, you know, let's let's trick it out so that it works like this way. And, you know, and next thing you know, you're you're crushing it. You've 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 learned exponentially faster than you would have without having video footage, which is listening to a coach try to explain everything to you that you did, you know, and then um, and then we've got all these great images and now we're starting to, to take it to these, these insane places, you know, and go around the world and get beautiful imagery of people living the dream, flying wingsuits. It is, that's what I call living the dream, yeah. living the dream, fall. wrote totally. a song about it. Totally. Yeah. It, it's it's amazing. <laughs> you know, I love traveling and I love seeing the world, but you're seeing it in a different perspective. You're seeing it from above and how it looks. And yeah, I'd love to be able to do it. I just wish I didn't have that fear. How do you overcome fear? Like, how do you stand on that edge? Surely your heart is jumping out of your chest at that point. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's not like it just happens. You just started wingsuit base jumping. It's like you take baby steps to get to where we are. You know, it took a lot of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and and years and years of training to get to the position that I'm at now in life, and uh, and the skill level that I am now. I mean, and, and it's like everything. You know, if you want to learn how to do a one and a half somersault off a diving board into the pool, you go to a low board, and then you start practicing jumps then you start practicing dives and you start, you know, just adding on and, and doing it in a, in an environment where you can make mistakes and then keep progressing. And when you get into the level that we're at now, you could still make minor mistakes, you know, very small, tiny ones. But if you make a big mistake, it's going to have catastrophic um, results. So, um, you're not allowed to make mistakes anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I saw some footage of you jumping out of a plane, and I think your foot got stuck. Whoa, that was a big mistake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was watching that thinking, oh. what is going to happen? And then I think someone, does someone cut your suit? My wingsuit booty, yeah. My booty. See, these squirrel suits were made so well that – I hooked my booty around this piece of metal on the plane and I just climbed out in a funny way and changed my mind and spun around and I hooked my booty over this piece of metal. And as I pushed off, it hooked my booty and it pulled me back into the plane. And I was just basically hanging off the strut, not the strut, but the, uh, there's an arm that holds the wheel and I was hanging off that for a minute and eight seconds. That was brutal. Oh, my foot hurts just thinking about that. It was my foot bent kind of upside down backwards, and I was just hanging there, and I started flying my wing um, upside down and backwards so that I would kind of relieve the pressure on my ankle. Oh. I couldn't reach it. I couldn't get it un untangled. I couldn't because my whole – the weight, the way I was dragging off the plane was just tightening it up even more. And uh, Marshall Miller grabbed a hook knife. Everyone was searching for hook knives, searching for hook knives. And they're looking in the glove box of the plane and everything, and the pilot's all keeping us cool. And, and I'm like, hey, guys, these squirrel suits we have, we all have hook knives. And I pull mine out, and I'm like, you got one, he's got one, he's got one. Cut me off of here, you know? <laughs> 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 and Mike, Mike Swanson, he, he was there on that one too. After they cut me off, he gave me the, the most improved <laughs> skydiver on the Rebel Air Force team for keeping a cool head and, and you know, hey – Use your hook knife. It's right there in your pocket, right next to your hand. And uh, yeah, so they cut me off. And then um, it's pretty funny because even though my booty was cut and I came off the plane and I was still flying just fine. And I just 
I did my job like I was supposed to do. I started flying my wingsuit over the bridge, over towards the lake. I even um, popped the smoke that was on my foot and, uh, you know, made a nice smoke trail so that Scotty Matt could shoot it for miles above. We're making our web series, you know, and uh, there I was, miles above, hanging upside down on a Cessna <laughs> by my wingsuit booty. And, yeah, thank you, Marshall, for cutting me away, dude. I really appreciate that because oh. it hurt. Yeah, yeah, it looked it looked really <laughs> intense and you know, I was pretty lucky just to, you got to keep a got to keep a cool head, mm-hmm. got to be calm, you know, and when, when stuff starts to happen and you're like, "Oh boy, what's going on? What's going on?" You can't panic. As soon as you panic, you're wasting time, you know. You just got to keep your head, you know, and do the right thing and and it's not over until you're you know, at the bar having a beer, talking about how cool it was, you know? Yeah. Have you, <laughs> have you had any other incidents like that? Um, I landed in a tree once. Oh. Yeah, at Bridge Day. Yeah, McConkie, Shane and I, we were doing a uh, unpacked base jump, which so uh, what does that mean? He, um, he started doing this thing that everyone, nobody liked. It was jumping your parachute unpacked. So you jump off of a bridge with your parachute just in your hand and you just throw it up into the air. Oh, and, okay. And we were doing those um, totally awesome rapid deployments off of uh, the New River Gorge Bridge in Fayetteville, West Virginia. And it's it's almost a thousand feet tall. And we thought that since it's almost a thousand feet tall, we could we can do a jump and open up a parachute and then I could have another one packed and we'll have a hundred foot rope tie it in between us and I'll cut away my parachute and then I'll rope swing off of Shane and then cut away from the rope swing and then open another parachute. One thing led to another and uh, we were doing that at bridge day and um, I got flung towards the hillside and I opened up just as I was going into a tree and um, that was another mishap. And of course, everybody wants to capitalize on that. So CNN's like, can we do a story on that? I'm like, (laughs) yes. Okay. (laughs) Not my proudest moment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not what you want really everybody to see. <laughs> but it shows you can like keep calm and everything's going to you know, everything's going south and just keep your head on and, and keep fighting all the way through. I always tell people never give up. It's like a picture of that um there's a seagull that's swallowing a frog, but the frog's arms are sticking out the sides of the, the beak of the seagull and it's choking out the choking it so it can't swallow and Never give up. Always keep going and and uh, until you're at the bar having a beer, telling the story about <laughs> there I was standing on a precipice. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. Did you did you have any major injuries from that falling into a tree? I can imagine you get a lot of scratches. Yeah, a scratch. That was it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wood. I've never been injured base jumping. You know, That's just great. scratch. Scratch, maybe a small bruise, but nothing, nothing to write home about. You know, it's a dangerous sport, but like you really can't afford to get hurt in it because the injuries aren't just jam your finger or you know poked in the eye. It's break a leg. There's, you know, when you're in a sport where femur is a verb, yeah, he femured in, you know, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a dangerous sport. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've traveled a lot around the world. Oh yeah, and you've ta- have you taken the family around the world and just been on an actual family trip without jumping? Um, well, yeah, yeah, we've we've gone not around the world family style. When we go around the world, it's it's when I'm doing projects and I'm bringing the family with us because I sometimes I'll do a project that's like three weeks long, and uh, that gets you know you start to miss everybody and like hey everyone's growing come on guys let's go so yeah we've I've taken um, the family to China and Italy and uh, Switzerland, Mexico. and uh, But like as far as family trips, we mostly tie them into when, when I'm doing cool things in cool places. So if you're going somewhere for a jump, how long do you prepare in that location? You mentioned like three weeks before, but does it take you three weeks to prepare before you jump? No, no, no. If, if I'm in a, in a location for three weeks, we're doing a big project, but usually it's, it's like one and done. You show up to like an iconic location and you do one jump and, and you're done. But, um, I have done a jump inside the uh, Gaylord hotel in national Harbor, Maryland in Baltimore. And, uh, 
inside that building, it was like 170 feet to impact, 220 feet to landing. And I had to like make a right turn and fly a pattern. And uh, I had gone and mapped out the building and brought home some measurements. And I, um, I was hanging ropes off the bridge here in Idaho. I live, I live next to like the coolest bridge going. It's um, the Prime Bridge. It's, uh, it's a 486 foot bridge over the river, over the Snake River, right near where Evil Knievel jumped the, uh, the Snake River Canyon, or attempted to. We're here in Twin Falls, Idaho, and my wife was born and raised here, so it was a match made in heaven when I met her in Tahoe. And I'm moving to Twin Falls, and so here we are, living next to this beautiful bridge and uh, jumping off of it every day. I haven't jumped it today, but I'm headed out there right after, like in a few moments. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, this bridge here is, um, it's legal base jumping year round. And people come from around the world to come jump off this bridge. And what I did was I, I took a, took all the measurements from, um, from the Gaylord Hotel and I made myself a mock course on the bridge mm-hmm. and I hung down some ropes with some balls. Like this is a point of impact. Okay. You got to open before that one. Then you got to turn right. And then this is the roof that you have to fly under. So you have to make sure you go underneath that one. And then the last point, the landing area, and you have to be able to flare and land by the landing area. So um, I did 86 uh, base jumps to prepare for one base jump for a project. And, you know, I was working on doing prep jumps for like four months before the one jump. It took, what was it, 18 seconds top to bottom. (laughs) <laughs> wow. well you've got to be prepared so, don't you oh yeah that's it being prepared and being a boy scout that's that's it that's the formula be prepared <laughs> yeah. it's so what is skyacking oh yeah skyacking that's a that's a sport that i've been pushing um to get into the olympic games here it's uh it's basically you get into a kayak um the smaller the better they fly better in the air and you jump out of an airplane and you free fall in a in a skyak because once it once you jump out of an airplane it no longer is a kayak it turns itself it morphs into a skyak and then when you're flying your skyak around in the air um when you're in free fall it's not the easiest thing to do it wants to flip you upside down and hold you there so you have to have really good balance you have it's like sitting on an exercise ball first you have to like kind of do a a quarter turn and a half flip and get yourself upright on it and then kind of balance on a ball. And then, um, and then you're upright and you're in free fall on your sky act. And then you open your parachute and hopefully you don't have line twists because, um, it's going to be hard to kick out a line twist with your feet in trapped inside your sky act. And then you, um, you fly down and you look for the coolest piece of water to land in. And, uh, it's, it's usually, you know, a river or a lake. Um, uh, I've done some some ditches near drop zones, and um, I've swooped water and then up onto land and up onto snow. But basically, you land a, a skyak out of an airplane up in the water, and that's kind of the the gist of it. And I've been pushing for the summer games, you know, in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of tricky because I'm the only one doing it. But, <laughs> but um, so so you'll win the gold. <laughs> you know, yeah, maybe maybe all three medals if I have three goes at it. But you know. If, if they're if they're not receptive soon, I think I'm going to try for the Winter Games. So, yeah, yeah, you might, <laughs> you might you might you might you might have more chance with the Winter Games. They're a little yeah. bit more extreme. Yeah. yeah, and I have I have done it differently in the snow. I call that one snow speed yakking because there's a sport called speed riding, and and now now we're speed yakking with like speed riding, but we're in a yak, so we're flying around, and I've I've launched and landed in snow with a speed wing on and, uh, and then go oh, down so the mountain. Yep. 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 Make turns, skip off the ground. And there's, there's going to be some of that going on this winter. So, you know, things to watch out for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and where do you do hard. that? Let's see. Red devil mountain and sun Valley and, uh, sun peak. Sun peak didn't go so well. I basically, um, I had a bad launch and I kind of rolled myself up and mummified myself in the lines and then just slid all the way down so uh yeah it's not the easiest of sports it it takes it takes a village it takes a crew to kind of help you out and uh and get a sport like that off the ground literally Mm. so um (laughs) (laughs) but uh yeah we're gonna do some sky i can hear pretty soon mostly in mexico is where that takes place i got a buddy out there works for altius 
events, and we've been doing a lot of sky acting in Mexico. Whereabouts so. in Mexico do you do that? Uh, all over, you know, Mexico City. Um, uh, Puerto Escondido is one of my favorite places to cruise down to and, and sky act. I did my first floater off a wave there, you know, and the wave curls over and it crests and it starts rolling over and you, you come in and you skip off the top of the uh, wave that's, that's um, rolling over and then skip off that and shoot out in front of it and then bounce off the water on up towards the shore. And then you want to make the beach before the wave comes up to shore so you can get out and it doesn't grab your parachute and yank you back in the water. It's kind of a super timely, tricky sport <laughs> when you when you mix it with waves, you know, parachutes and waves, they're not the best match for each other, you know, and yeah, they like to get you underwater and hold you there. So mm. luckily for me, I was a lifeguard in my youth and know how to deal with water and waves. And I'm pretty quick on the old cutaway handle and get away from the, get away from the waves and out of my sky, I can up on the beach real fast so I can tell the story about how it went in the sky. Yeah. So now you've moved into coaching. Yeah, no, I've been I've been coaching for years. I've just been doing a lot more of it lately, coaching base jumping and parachute skills, teaching people how to have as much fun as you most possibly can, which is base jumping and uh, wingsuit base jumping. I'm on a team with Squirrel. We're called Next Level, and we, we teach people how to fly their bodies to the next level. And you have something called the Big Wall European Adventure. Can you explain what that is? A oh, big wall European adventure. That's like, let's go jump off cliffs and jump off of big walls. And every time you go to Europe, it's an adventure. You know, I love it. You know, the food's always amazing. And, and you're always like trying to figure out the language and how to get around. And But um, yeah, the big wall European adventure is basically let's go to Europe and jump off, have some adventures jumping off of super big walls. So people can join you to do that, right? Yep. Yep. So they just need to go to your website. Yeah, check me out at milesdasher.com. We've got um, all kinds of fun things going on there, but uh, that's kind of a, a way to, to get in touch with me and, and get into uh, Miles D's base camp, which is my school, my base jumping school. And you're also a stuntman in films, is that right? Yeah, I did. Uh, I got my Hollywood debut in Iron Man 3. Yeah, super awesome. Iron Man actually saved me and, and 11 of my friends. And uh, we were falling, and uh, we were gonna die because Air Force One blew up, and we got thrown out the door or out the out the side of the airplane. And um, and Iron Man came down and grabbed us all up and swooped us into the water and dropped us into the river, and we all, all survived. Yeah, no, we did uh we did some stunts for Iron Man Three. It was it was amazing. I so, was a Marine Major, Marine Major Duxley reporting for duty. Oh, it was okay. Awesome. Yeah, this Hollywood stunt man. That was that's been my dream. You know, when I was a kid, I watched this movie called. Uh, Hooper with Burt Reynolds and I always wanted to be a stuntman. I used to jump off the roof of my house and that's what kind of helped me get into the sport that I am today, you know, and taking judo and learning how to jump off the roof of my house and then and then launching into pools and doing all kinds of cliff jumps and 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 then slowly working my way into bungee jumping, skydiving and base jumping. That's it all started with uh, wanting to be a stuntman and that dream came true, so Super stoked. Yeah, that's amazing. Do you still hold the record for the most amount of base jumps in 24 hours? Yeah, well, I'm tied now. Danny Whalen, he and I, we both are tied at 64. Wow. Yeah. And you did that in a 24-hour period. Yeah, that's that's hiking over 30,000 vertical feet wow. in 24 hours, which is more than a, you know the height of Mount Everest from the sea level, from the beach to the top of Everest is uh you know 29,000 so we both have done over 30,000 vertical feet. Some people do that as a hiking endeavor, you know, they'll hike upstairs and ride an elevator down and hike upstairs, ride an elevator down and hike upstairs and they'll do that until they can do 29,000 vertical feet. That's no joke. Well, um, both of us had to use like a massage therapist and if I didn't have fresh socks, you know, like every six jumps, I wouldn't have made it. No way. <laughs> I mean, it's intense. I was watching the video for that and I thought, how are you even climbing up there? Yeah, that's, that's the hardest part is hiking up. You know, the jumping is the easy part and that's the fun part where you get to do tricks and do flips and that kind of thing. But, but, but hiking up the mountain, it's like, whew, it gets brutal. You know, your body's like, okay, this is enough. And no, no, we got this. We got this. And you got to stay hydrated. You got to keep eating. And, and uh, yeah, you got to keep your legs loose because they just want to tighten up your hamstrings. Oh, man. I did an ice bath after the end of that one. And my wife, um, Nikki, uh, she's an occupational therapist. And, and so I'm like, hey, honey, I'm about to do 20 minutes in this ice bath to get my legs back 
back to normal. And she's like, no, 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 no. Seven minutes is tops, you know, for a, for a full submersion ice bath. I'm like, okay, seven minutes. I got this. Ooh. I can only handle four minutes. And I was out of there. Oh, I Whoa. Know. Oh, ice baths are a killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, man, ice baths, they're like, if, if you're if you're done and you've, you've overexerted yourself, jump in an ice bath and you're going to heal that much faster. That's part of being a Wolverine is it's taking an ice bath. and You heal up so quick. So awesome. Yeah. Do you think that you're going to try and beat your record? Nope. You're done? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm pretty proud of it. You know, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. I would like to use a crane or an elevator and, and, and crush it, you know, yeah. but um, yeah, the hiking, hiking one, that's, that's no joke. You know, I mean, that's, you're done for, you know, the rest of the week after that, <laughs> you know, just resting up and recouping. Yeah, I'm good, though. I like it. 64, that sounds perfect. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of jumps <laughs> in one day. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. But right now, I'd like to jump off the bridge and, and get out there and make some, make some more magic in the sky. Sounds great. <laughs> I'll let you go jump off a cliff. <laughs> oh, no, you're jumping off a bridge. What are you jumping off today? Going off the Prime Bridge. Yeah. Okay. Yip ya. Thanks for listening to With You Every Step, hosted by Michelle Lee. We do hope you enjoyed listening. And if you did, make sure you tell everybody. If you didn't, nobody likes a Debbie Downer. Please subscribe to get up to date with our latest releases and give us a thumbs up on our social media at With You Every Step. We love to hear from you. If you have any questions or inquiries, please email us at michelle at michellelee.com or head to the Contact Us page at our website, michellelee.com. That's also where you'll find all our blogs mentioned in the podcast. We love to hear from you and if we have inspired you to travel. Thanks for listening. Love life and adventure on.